Today, farmers in the park at the new Mead Aquatic Center on Meet the Farmer TV. Here we are at Farmers in the Park, Mead Park Aquatic Center, every Wednesday from 3 to 7. And we have the market manager, Stephanie Andrade Malloy. So we have a limited number of vendors this year. Yes, we have 25 <laughs> um, reserve vendors this year. You have to be a reserve vendor to, to come in. There's no uh, walk-ins or... No, there isn't. And, and basically we had to because we had so much interest um, in this market. And I think part of it is because the city market is so full that we're not taking new vendors there. So people are trying to get in here. So at some point I had to go, hmm, this isn't good. Um, yeah. Because really, this is a small market. That's what it was started to be. Um, and I don't want to add too many vendors and right. lose good vendors because they don't make enough sales. Yeah. Um, we talked to Sticky Fingers down at the end and they, and they couldn't get into this Saturday market right. yet. They're on a waiting list, so they were happy to have a spot here. Right. Yes, that's true. Are there some new things about this year's setup? We used to be kind of spread out. There's lots of grass, and, and now there's kind of a restricted area to come in. We have lots of new things. We have this beautiful aquatic center that's behind us. They're still working on it, but it's yeah. going to be beautiful. Um, we have a smaller area, but it's really probably not much smaller than what we, we used last year. It just feels smaller because we have this huge, beautiful pool. Right. So. Um, that's probably one of the biggest differences that people probably don't realize isn't really that different. <laughs> now, what, what about the, the customer parking? We have a reserved area for customer parking in the front? We've got uh, reserved parking for vendors um, for unloading and loading, and we're also trying to reserve that for our customers um, because, you know, we have, you know customers are going to have to walk a long way. Um, so we also have reserved two um, spaces for pickup where people, if they buy a big watermelon and cantaloupe and lots of things, that they can leave them right here and drive their car and pick it up. So that's right here on the end next, next to the spaces, manager's booth. Yes. So Stephanie, is, is there, are, are there some hints you'd like to give to the vendors for how to make it smooth of, of when to get here, where to go, where, where, how to unload, and then where to move the vehicles to? Yes. <laughs> I, th I think and, and we're working that out. I think it's probably going to take me a few weeks to figure out all of the hints that we need out um, because there's limited, par limited parking for the vendors to unload. So we're probably going to look at, you know, staggering the arrival times, like so the larger farms to get here at 1 or 1.30 and unload. Mm -hmm. And then have the smaller farms show up, you know, later, you know, 2.15 or whatever so that we don't have like today it was a little crazy where people were waiting to for other people to move and so um we're going to try to work all these little kinks out what we need is we need vendors to park unload and get out move i mean there's lots of streets that they can park on um, so the vendor should move to a street location some of the off uh off street parking or, or sidewalk uh parking zones after they finished unloading. Absolutely. Um, because we want our customers to be able to pull right up and load their goods. Um, and I'm trying to help with those two spaces that we were talking right. about earlier, but you know, it's only gonna help so many. Uh, yeah. We have handy, we have a lot of handicapped people mm -hmm. that come here or even, you know, senior citizens that come here that aren't able to walk as, yeah. as far. Um, so we really want this right up front parking for customers. Now does the city have a, a bus line or, or, or something that stops here so that you could actually ride the, the city transit? Absolutely. We, um, I believe, I've, I've heard that the bus line is actually changed for this new aquatic center. So the bus line is going to be coming and stopping right up the road, like right in front of the market. So yeah. So the people, bus is a great way to get here. So people could go to the transfer station, leave their cars down there, ride the, the CTS to the market, and then not have any of the parking issues. Absolutely. So Stephanie, how should people get some information ab about how to uh, 
uh, how to become a vendor, how to get to the park, uh, where what the hours are, all of that sort of detailed information. Is there a website or a telephone number or how would they get that information? I have um, a blog and that is um, manager.charlesvillecitymarket.com and that's a great place to find out information like this um, because I do post things there. We're also on Facebook now so I, I have a Facebook for Charlottesville um, City Market and Farmers in the Park. I also post things there. So Terrific. the information hopefully is going to be available. So we're here with Robin Brown and, and I guess you just like have a little garden out on, and behind the apartment in Charlottesville or something and, uh, and you just yeah. some extra produce. But, but I understand you've retired twice now. You, you farmed, it, this is multi-generational, right? Your yeah. dad farmed and, and you started farming and then you retired from farming and went and ran the, the gardens up in Monticello and, and then retired again and went back to farming. Yeah, I wanted to get back in the real world, you know. Okay. You know I had enough of show business farming, I wanted to really farm. So, so you've been doing it 40 did, years. Yeah. 40 years. Yeah, yeah. I don't look that old, do I? No. It's I, at least 22, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I started when I was 18. So, when you grew up, your dad was farming this, the same kind of truck farming yeah. like this, and yeah, he was, did it. And his grand, his father did it. I kept doing it, but I'm, I'm going to be the end. Yeah. Yeah, my kids. Kids don't. aren't going to no, go for it. Huh? No. Maybe, I, but it'll be later. So would your dad have ever believed you'd get a dollar a pound for a tomato? He said to me, this is true now, Mike. He said to me when I was about 17, he said, you stick to this and someday you'll get a dollar for a tomato. But he didn't tell me a pickup truck was going to be $30,000, you know. Yeah. What was yeah. a gallon of gas when he was? Quarter. Quarter? I got a John Deere tractor home with two cylinder that he bought brand new for $650, $650. It's a brand new tractor. Still got, running? Still running. I use it. Yeah. yeah. And it's 1938 and it's got the original tires on the back. So that shows you something. That wouldn't work today, would yeah. it? I, that you have to get a new one every four years or they just automatically fall apart. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, tell it? me now, what do you have here? Give us an idea of what, what you're growing and uh, and then maybe you can take us out and give us a tour of the No kidding, you, don't, the rec operation. you don't recognize this stuff, huh? No, I don't. No. I, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> These are beets, you know, red beets. Yeah, you know, we have this problem uh, that all of ours are little tiny things, like the squash I showed you with the flowers last week. And oh, yeah, yeah. Mine never get that Yeah, big. but you're into that little stuff, you know. I oh. noticed that, yeah. I guess I yeah. shouldn't be picking them. Yeah, yeah you've waited like two days, they'll be bigger, Mike. Really? Yeah, yeah. They don't keep growing in the box. No, no. Once oh, you pick man, them, that's, that's it. That's yeah. <laughs> you know, this is just the typical truck farm of vegetables, the early stuff, you know, beets. Now you're doing Onions. some pretty intense production, right? You, you do raised beds with plastic culture and plastic some drip tape. Plastic drip irrigate it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've covered some of that uh, down at Petersburg where they show the machines laying the, the plastic and the tape together. Yeah, yeah I can show you that. But mine's, mine's a small operation. I'm, they probably had like a four row layer or something, didn't they? No, they're doing one row. One row down. layer? Laid the drip tape at the same time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. And, and they, they had students with them driving sideways and things? Yeah, well. <laughs> My rows are plenty crooked, too. <laughs> what happens is when you're laying the plastic, you know, if, if you had to help, you'd have a guy following you because my ground's rocky in places. Yeah, and it pulls yep. that. Well, if a rock gets where the cover is throwing over, yeah. you're going down a row about 600 feet and you turn around one edge ain't covered. Yep. Now you got a job, you know. Now we tried paper. Yeah. We were going to be real environmental and we were going to do paper and, and that rock just means rip. Yeah. And you start all over. I see that. I don't see them selling that anymore. I don't no, know I don't think. It, you, well, it doesn't. It doesn't stretch. So the slightest little turn, it tears. See, all the stuff I use is photodegradable. Uh huh. All the plastic. But still, it's photodegradable, not biodegradable. So if it's buried, it doesn't degrade. Oh. So you got to disc the heck out of it at the end Bring of the year. Bring it up to the. Bring surface. it up. And still, some isn't. I mean, there's still little pieces all over my ground. Yeah. But it's. I don't know. It's eventually. It will go away eventually. Yeah. You know. But I don't know how long it will take. So that means if it's exposed to the sunlight, it'll break down. Right. But if it's covered with the soil, it's going to stay. Exactly right. So it, it lasts a, a season okay it'll to keep last the weeds. It a season. In. Yeah. And uh, it has different day lengths. You can buy, you know, there's like three different day lengths. There's 90 days, 120, 150. Like with peppers or eggplants, something you're going to pick the whole season, you go at 150. Uh -huh. I usually go with in between with 120. Now, one time I bought a lot of it and laid a lot of it, and the, the degradation, they call it, the stuff that makes it degrade, uh -huh. they had done it wrong. 
Uh -oh. And he degraded it in three weeks. Three weeks? Three weeks. And by hard luck, I had planted a lot of tomatoes in it already. So, you know, it's all. So now, there's no way to cultivate it. They look like my tomatoes. <laughs> no, but we One had a, tomato, five weeds. We had, a, <laughs> we had to buy straw and lay around them all. Oh, yeah? You know, but uh, I called the guy, and uh, he gives you a disclaimer, you know, when you, when yeah. you buy it. So. But I didn't want to do anything to him. I just wanted to find out what that the, the heck happened. Yeah, it didn't you know? work. And I still got some at home if you want some. I got about 10 rolls of it. All right. Yeah. The straw took the place of the plastic. So you just put a straw mulch A down. straw mulch. It doesn't yeah. work as good because it, straw cools the ground. The black plastic warms the ground. But yeah. for later tomatoes, it'd be all right. But still, we had to do something. Because if you didn't lay plastic over them, I'd plant them in on four and a half foot centers. I can cultivate them with my little one-row tractor at home. But when you lay the plastic, now they're yeah, you can't get You're it. off, Alda. Well, do you know what last year, uh, a water printing, they got some contaminated straw. I heard that. And it had uh, atrazine or something. 2,4-D. And, and it killed all their tomatoes. Yeah. So, yeah. so, it, so farming's just a piece of cake. Oh, yeah. If it wasn't for the weeds and the bugs and the disease, it'd be easy. Yeah. You know? Now, how long have you been at the market? Charlottesville? Only one longer is George Cason. I think I've been there since 81. 81? Yeah. yeah. I think we started 83. Yeah, I'm just... It, yeah. When did, it, was it 83 when it moved to the Carver Rec Center? The Yeah, no. I don't know. I'll tell you the truth. I can't remember when. I, I can't either. George would know. He's the grandfather of the market. You know. Yeah, we talked to him about yeah. that. Right? Yeah. Also, this is the first time you've done this Wednesday market. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I was working at that other job, and now I'm full time, so I'm going to four. Four markets a week. What, yeah. Which four markets do you go to? Here, Luvanna. Uh, Charlottesville. Saturday, yep. And I go to Bridgewater twice a week. I should say five, but it's really four. You know. So what's coming up? Well, tomatoes. Tomatoes? Sweet corn, cantaloupes, watermelons, peppers. You know. Groundhog? <laughs> Groundhog. <laughs> Tell us where your farm is. Fork Union. Fork Union. Louvanna County. Yeah. And you got an extra long growing season, right? Yeah, I guess. And, I and you know. and you have like a huge well. It was the yeah. well for the whole town or yeah, something? Yeah, I got a good well and I got a good brook. And, you know, I only really doing this on maybe 10 acres. Yeah. The rest of it's hay land or CRP ground, you know. So as soon as you pack up from here, you go home and run around on the ATV and turn all the pumps on, right? Not today. Not <laughs> Normally, yeah. We've got a little rain this spring, didn't we? Yeah, too much. Yeah. Feast or famine. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, my father used to say uh, a dry year will scare you to death, but a wet year will starve you to death. Mm. You know, a wet year is worse than a dry year. Yeah. But, now, did his father farm too? Uh-huh. So this yeah. is three generations? Yeah. My father died before he, he, uh, he never seen all this plastic that we use today, you know. The kind of farming I do. So he gave you a hoe when you were four years oh, old? everything was, you know, there was no plastic mulch strip irrigation. It was all old time stuff, you know. Yeah. Plastic has changed a lot. A lot of yeah. farmers. Yeah. That sounds like the asses and elbows, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So there you have it. Farmers in the Park at the Mead Park Aquatic Center here in downtown Charlottesville every Wednesday, 3 to 7 p.m. Thank you for joining us for Meet the Farmer TV.